The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Welcome back to Probably Podcast and she's married, okay? Now I'm recording this early though. I'm recording this uh, on Tuesday or Monday, the day before I leave for Italy on Tuesday. So I can't really explain to you what it feels like to have my wedding because I actually haven't had it yet. It's this weekend. But let's just go ahead and assume it was fucking amazing, okay? Like uh, literally amazing. Um, And also I know you guys are maybe like, wow, another fucking repeat episode. But guess what? It makes sense. It's literally part two, part two, episode 25, I took a pill in Ibiza. And it's honestly, like, it's a Fuego episode because I, like, I was absolutely destroyed. Like, I was destroyed and it's funny and it's amazing. So anyways, um, listen to this. It's basically just a breakdown. Um, First of all, I really did just take way too much drugs in Ibiza. Like, it was not well with my soul. James, what did you think? James is still here. He's still naked. Um, What did you think? <laughs> you don't have to tell him that. What did you think about... um? me whenever we had first met you met this gorgeous gorgeous girl in barcelona you spent two hot and heavy days with her she went off to ibiza which is your favorite place and then she told you she took too many drugs did i tell you that did i tell you i took too many oh, drugs i think you did yeah you were pretty honest with me <laughs> and i, I had no soul left i after. thought to myself well to be honest i'd rather you have done that escapade without me being there because i probably would have been like oh here we go i remember my first time in ibiza <laughs> yeah but i mean i wasn't really doing anything crazy i was just like vomiting quickly. well you have to listen to the episode listen to the episode because it gives no for down. sure i still did think though i think maybe for a very short period of time i thought oh maybe this girl's one of those crazy girls who can't hack any kind of substances she takes and she's just got it terribly wrong you wouldn't be incredibly wrong by saying that <laughs> i keep trying though guys i'm not a quitter I'll i keep... i appreciated the honesty though okay yeah and and do you know what this is when i knew i actually really really liked you at that point even having only met you for a couple of days because i was genuinely more concerned that you were at, you were okay rather Aww. than being like oh that's embarrassing like i was genuinely like oh i really hope that it wasn't too bad and that you're okay that's how i felt oh my god that's really sweet he's naked he's trying to get lucky okay um that's actually really sweet you really thought that oh you should think that's honestly the bar is in hell ladies that's what you should fucking think <laughs> <laughs> is she okay Instead of that's embarrassing. Actually, for a second, I can't even believe I just said, oh, that is where the bar should literally be. That's so low of a bar. That's good, James. I think you can still also say Aww. that's sweet. Cause... Okay, fine. That's sweet. But the bar's in hell. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Give us some credit. <laughs> okay. Um, also, something else that we talk about in this episode, which I won't spoil it because it is a great re-listen. It's actually so fucking crazy that this is episode 120, 115 when this episode that we're re-listening to is episode 25. Like, so much time has passed. So many episodes have happened. Um, but another thing that we recap, which I won't spoil, you have to listen to it, is basically us deciding that we were not going to go to Seville. Well, I'll leave it for the episode, but James... Once they listen to this, give your thoughts on, did you think I was crazy when we decided to come back to Barcelona? Oh, I loved it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I was like, more sexy time in Barcelona. Yeah, honestly, at that point, he was just like, good old fuck. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, so stay tuned to listen to part two of the two-part series, episode 25, I Took a Pill in Ibiza. Bye, guys. All right, guys. We look a little bit different because it's literally a different fucking day. Um, we had to just absolutely break this into two uh, podcast episodes. And if you heard yesterday's, just just buckle up because it's just only going to get more ratchet. Um, all right. So where did we leave off, Marissa? We obviously have the fabulous Marissa back with us. We couldn't do this without her. Um, we were in a visa. I'm, I'm glad that it's in two parts. I feel like we were going to rush through it and Ibiza I, had a lot to tell. Yeah, there's so yeah. much to tell, but I was already trying to like uh, make really interesting, cool parts like short. And I was like, how do we do this? And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just let's just make it two episodes. Yeah. So we get to Ibiza. Did we say that the, the flight and also I'm going to double check with producer Courtney here on some stuff. The flight was just like yeah disruptive as fuck like yeah it was like a movie everyone was singing and chanting and dancing and it was so much fun we land we're staying at the nobu mm -hmm. we, it's beautiful uh we decide to go to i think what dinner right yeah and again the timing of everything in spain is just it's much later so i remember actually at one point we we're probably at dinner at like 9 p.m marissa marissa was like 
oh god i just want to dance i was like i know me too it's like 9 p.m and we're just like eating sushi so we ate that night downstairs at nobu and she's like my hips are in jail i literally Everyone's- felt like they were in jail <laughs> they like- wanted to swivel and twirl i wanted to drop it to the ground and i was sitting at the child's table at yeah nobu. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is also we couldn't get a reservation but i was like don't worry we're staying here they're like yeah we don't care um i'm like we'll have a table for two at your peak time they're like no mm-hmm. so they're like you can sit at the sushi bar i'm like per <laughs> I, I, I'm already laughing because <laughs> well I so I go down to the concierge and I'm like okay so we just need something for two if there's something available and he's like so the only thing available is the sushi bar I was like I don't care that's fine I had a little panic attack because I was under the impression that the sushi bar was um like a sushi train you guys <laughs> wherever you lived you have some ratchet like strip mall restaurant that has sushi come around on like a conveyor belt and yeah. you just grab and it has like color-coded <laughs> stickers on it and you save the stickers or something like marissa was like i just like it's fine i'm just gonna have to order something that's not sushi and i was like that's fine they have tons of stuff on the menu she's mm-hmm. like i know but she's like might be coming out in front of me i was like why would it be coming out? She's like, it's just going to go around on a train. I was like, what do you think? We we're are in Cool Springs? Dressed up super nicely. The last thing that we could get, I was like, I fucked it up and got us in front of a sushi train. I know. It was fine, except for the the issue was we still went kind of early. We went like 8 30. And Marissa looked around. I was like, damn, it's literally just us at the at the sushi bar. And she goes, yeah, see, I'm going to need like one more person to sit here because I feel like we mm-hmm. look like we're in trouble. <laughs> and then like, do you remember who sat down? A yes. woman and her six year old daughter. With a with an iPad. Yeah. Like just absolutely we were like, Oh, we really are at the kids' table. Back okay. to the restaurant, only facing the chef. Yep. 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 It was um it wasn't the vibe that we wanted to enter into a bees with, but here's the thing. This night was like us on our own night because we had met those awesome people on the plane, like I said. And um did I tell you the connection? I was trying to make everything so short. Did I give the connection about Anna Grace? Yes. How funny that is that she had met them yes. in Miami. I mean crazy. So anyways, we go to uh Nobu that night. What else did we do that night? Well, then we were trying to ask for plans, like for like where should we go next? Where do we go and party? Where we do went we go to and Roto. dance? It was so freaking early that we went to dinner. Everyone was like, "It's too early. You should try Roto." Right, which was fantastic. It's Only on the water. It's beautiful. Should have had a reservation. We sat in the corner. Gosh, away yeah. from the party. We're like nobody likes us here. <laughs> um, we do though. I have to say, I just completely and totally fucked this up. We have to backtrack because the second we got to Nobu, how did I forget this? The second we got to Nobu was during the day, right? So uh, Nobu is the hotel. I don't know if I already said that. Like, it's obviously a restaurant everyone knows of, but it's a hotel in Ibiza. And when we get there, we go upstairs, we change our swimsuits. The the main attraction of this Nobu hotel is the gorgeous pool, the gorgeous pool bar. It looks right out into the ocean, crystal clue crystal blue water and we were like we're absolutely parking our asses right up here in a little cabana or a little chair area and gonna have a sip on something tropical Mm -hmm. so we do that (laughs) we're walking (laughs) just paint the scene we're i mean whatever absurd swimsuit that's showing my like like clitoris is i'm wearing and i'm just like walking and they're like um yeah we can actually sit you right here it was a fabulous little table area looking right at the water and we were like perfect 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 and as i go to sit in the chair marissa's like oh hold on hold on watch out watch out and the lady's still walking us to the table so she she kind of jolts and i look back and marissa goes wait 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 wait." and i was like immediately definitely the first thing that hit me was i was like a lizard like there's like an iguana or something Mm, by my foot with those things i kind of (laughs) wish i kind of wish those (laughs) things can get kind of they could bite you like yeah yeah totally so i was like oh i like lift my foot up and (laughs) Take it away. It was a little mouse. It was a mouse. It was like a little field mouse. It I was got a country so mouse. Sad. Okay, I have had mice issue at my house before, and I feel like they're what's the word nocturnal or something. They're just not supposed to be in the daytime chilling. You with guys, it was people. like bright, sunny, sunshiny yes. pool day. He was in the midst of everyone. It was like so. It was it was peculiar because so I mm-hmm. so I hop back thinking like wouldn't whatever creature is here run away by now? And Marissa goes, look at him right there. And I look and it's this little mouse and he's sitting there and he hasn't moved at all, which I jumped away from it. So like that would totally scare a mouse. We like got closer and he wasn't moving and I but had he was the, looking. Yeah, but I was like, is that a fake mouse? And then I was like, <laughs> that is so weird. Like why would Nobu have like a fake mouse? just like sitting under a table she's like who put a fake mouse under the table that's so weird and then she goes it was so pure (laughs) it was so pure she looks at me she goes oh and she actually she she looked at the the waiter that had walked us over there and she was like oh he's sick he was sick he's sick and i go i look at her i go what she was like he would have a she immediately went into this like maternal state i was like a mouse and she was like 
Oh, he's sick. Look yep. at him. He's not yep. moving. He's sick. They should be running fast, running away. The fact that he was just sitting there, he was sick like maybe they had like sad. come and put <laughs> Mount Rat Poison down, and he was just a lone survivor, he, just on his uh, way to the pearly gates, wherever the country mouse go after they die. I'll see him there one day. You will see him there. But what a way to go out though. We Nobu? did at yeah, Nobu. I agree. We did have to tell him. You know, the people that work there, like, there's a mouse under the table, so we're just gonna. We're going to head to the bar. We're like, you know what? We'll just go back to the bar. And we could have cared less. We did. We literally, they were like, oh, we are so sorry. We are so sorry. We were like, dude, we, <laughs> it is really okay. It's not like it yep. bit one of us or something, but I swear mice do follow me. The, you remember the rat lamp when I had those baby oh, rats and uh, the lamp that came to me from that. China? We can't talk about that That's again. a whole different story. I actually just mm-hmm. recently deleted that highlight off my Instagram because I was like, this is dark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're the fetuses of rats. And I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. My friend Jenna Sims actually had a rat bite her one time when she was getting no, off the plane. Yeah, she had to go I get like, like a shot. Dangerous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyways, we're just like rat fan for life. I have loved Scotch and Soda, which is like an incredible clothing brand, for a really, really long time. And they just came out with the collab of the century. I think that is Scotch and Soda x Joe Jonas. It's really just giving makes sense. Like Scotch and Soda creates this like standout wardrobe pieces that encourage you to like make a statement. That is also what Joe Jonas does, I feel like. And they're crafting pieces that blend unexpected fabrics, patterns, right? But then they also have these like classic techniques and silhouettes that you can just like kind of add as staples into your closet. I think Scotch and Soda really is just amazing. I have a couple blazers from them. I have a pair of trousers that you guys always obsess over that I wear. Scotch and Soda has their first drop of their collaboration with the international pop star, songwriter, actor, and brand ambassador, Joe Jonas. So the collection is designed and co-created with Joe and it fuses Scotch and Soda's distinct style with Joe Jonas's playful sartorial approach including like bold colors prints textures i feel like we see that on stage when he's performing and in general like he really does just love this like different look and it's also high quality fabrics and premium tailoring so we love that about scotch and soda that's something they always deliver but the scotch and soda x joe jonas capsule collection features a mix of men's and unisex clothing um they actually have a workman's jacket in the collection that i'm absolutely eyeing so can confirm it's unisex i love it um but they've got accessories like this really cool like handkerchief scarf that I feel like you could wear around your neck also really unisex really cool and it encompasses Joe Jonas's confident approach to style because he gets a little funky you know what I mean so inspired by and you can totally see this the American West the 70s vintage Americana and then Joe's personal photography there's a t-shirt that's really cool with like his personal film photos on it and writings the capsule comes together and creates a dynamic wardrobe built to last all right so a celebration of creativity and confidence Jonas's personal style is represented all throughout with original artwork rich fabrics and embroidery inspired by his musings and they really are just cool guys I think they're really awesome I'm gonna get something for James from the collection get something for myself from the collection so if you guys want to check out the scotch and soda x Joe Jonas collection it is now available at scotchandsoda.com EU and US at select retailers. Use code probably for 20% off your first order. That's an incredible discount. That is code probably for 20% off your first order at scotchandsoda.com, EU and US and select retailers. Visit www.scotchandsoda.com for more information. Yeah, we're like, we don't care. It's fine. We go to the bar. This guy, of course, again, disclaimer for the accents. We're going to fuck them up, but it's, it's just, they were so many accents everywhere we went. What did he do? He was like... I, I'm so sorry, but your drink is at my home next. Your drink is at my, your next drink is at my home. And we were like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, he, no, we'll stay at the hotel. Like, he literally walked away. We looked at each other. We were like, did we just get invited to someone's house? We're like, like everyone's obsessed with us. <laughs> no, he it immediately clicked. I go, oh, the next mm-hmm. drink is on the house. Yeah. He meant to say on the house, but like, you know, just slight different language barrier there. And I was like, oh, Marissa's like, next drink's on the house because the mouse. I was yeah. like, damn, yeah. honestly, RIP. I hope wherever that mouse is at. Well, yeah. then here's the thing. We just watched like three separate people try to get the mouse out because you could tell they could, it wasn't moving. So mm-hmm. they had to probably like pick it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and yeah, I feel like that'll come back into play later. This poor mouse and you're sitting there and you're like, do we just like, let him chill and let him be or like how do we get him out of here get this thing out of here literally us in the club fast forward two nights from now like so the next day how do we get us out how do we get us out we are the mouse (laughs) we won't go there yet but (laughs) we'll uh yeah we'll we'll circle back but basically um we go to we wake up i think we tried to go we went to roto we went one other place and then we were like listen we've got big days ahead of us we've been invited oh what else um 
it was Pacha, Pacha, whatever it was. Pacha. And it was still so early. The club didn't open until oh, wait, 2. So funny. We went to a club and they were like, it's not open. <laughs> like our night started so early. It did not open until 2. At this point, it's like 1 a.m. Yeah. And in my head, I'm thinking we can't get there at 2. There's no yeah. way it's busy. Right. We ended up meeting people who did end up going. Yep. And they sent us videos at like 2.15. And it was insane. It was packed to the nine. We so were like, we don't understand Ibiza. We don't understand Ibiza. Mm-hmm. We Another thing we don't understand about Ibiza. Here's the thing. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, what are you going to wear? What are you going to wear? Me and Marissa, we could not have been more perplexed. Like, I'm just a fashion girly pop. I love fashion. I'm into fashion. Marissa understands fashion. We had everything ready to go, but we were just perplexed. It's like we had all the pieces, but we were like, what do people do? Marissa was very fixated on this one concept, which I was like, that is not a thing. That is not a thing. She was like, I feel like everyone's wearing tennis shoes. And I was like, no, they just have bad style. Mm -hmm. They're in these like club bodycon dresses, but they've got tennis shoes. I'm like that's their style and or it's like bad we're not doing that black chunky ankle booties like combat um, boots yeah with like a bright pink t- short tight dress and then these black thick ankle booties and yeah. I'm like I everything was so perplexing but yeah. I was I mean Marissa could not have been more like in tune with it like we need to figure out what shoes and I was like Marissa we are cooler than these people mm-hmm. like she's going to like tagged photos in like all the clubs and I'm like no no no, no. they just have weird like um People that are really into like techno music, sometimes they just dress like that. It's just not our style. We're going to wear heels. Yeah. So, so, so don't wear heels. Um, in Ibiza, nobody wears heels at the club. Not one person was in heels other than two people we saw, which were ourselves in the mirror in the bathroom <laughs> because literally nobody else has heels on. <laughs> not one. We, it wasn't one of those times because I'm also not insecure. If I look hot, I don't care if I don't look like mm-hmm. everyone else. I'm fine with it. It was one of those moments where you're like, oh, so like this is not the vibe like we are disrupting the vibe and now my vibe's disrupted in my brain honestly it was one of those moments this is gonna sound so dramatic where i was like i'd rather just go home <laughs> like i was like, definitely i was like this looks so silly we're in these i am the in the shortest dress you could ever imagine in your whole entire life i'll have courtney pop up a photo because it is oh my god so tiny 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 and the heels and we show up to uh the group that we were going with their villa we had actually asked them to like what are you girls wearing and they're like love them sexy love them but we got screwed just a little just a tiny bit they didn't mean to but like they were like something sexy they were probably understanding that they were going to wear tennis shoes with it because they all did have on sexy outfits Mm -hmm. but then they had tennis shoes on like the literal rest of the entire universe that's ever been to Ibiza other than me and marissa Mm -hmm. and so we show up in our like boat I mean, like Bottega, like stilettos and Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like acrylic clear heels and a short, tiny dress. I mean, I'm not a short, tiny dress. I'm not really a dress person. And the only way when I've come back and talked about it, it's like going out on Broadway and you shot like in New in Nashville, you showed up in a short, tight dress and heels and walked into Whiskey Row. Yes. You stood out. Oh, my God. We stood out. Like it was not, not in a, a good way. way. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No one was like, look at those hot girls. They were like idiots. Idiots. Um, try hard. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Anyways, we're at the club. And as we left off on the last episode, I was like, oh, why would I go to Ibiza? We've all seen the movie Ibiza. We've all heard the song. I took a bit and then Ibiza. Why would I not go to Ibiza and try drugs? So we all know <laughs> that I did ecstasy for the first time at Coachella. And so I know that Molly or MD or whatever it is, is basically like a more pure version of ecstasy. As you guys recall, I had a great time on ecstasy. I don't think I'd do it again unless I was like genuinely like at somewhere like, um, you know, Coachella or a music festival. festival, I just, again, I don't have a very addictive personality. I just have a really, uh, I like to try things. I like to try them out. Give them a whirl. Give them a swirl. So I was like, I would now like to try out Molly. As we also recall, I thought I did Molly one time in Tulum, but it was meth. So (laughs) I was like, let's give it a solid try. And it was coming from a very, very like reliable, legit source. So we knew for sure. I actually told the story to the people that were like um, helping us out with the distribution. (laughs) And and they were like, that is not, (laughs) this is that, this is Molly. I was like, okay, perfect. So the issue at hand was... And here's the thing, again, Marissa is literally like my Anna Grace at this point. She's like, no judgment, do you boo, love it for you. I'm not personally going to do Molly. I was like, I would never pressure anyone to do Molly. She's like, I would never be pressured. I'm like, cool, I'm glad we had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> We're at uh, like a dare meeting. We're like, don't do drugs, say no, whatever. But I'm just like, cool, cool, cool. So anyway, so Marissa is now, obviously this is just tragic, but I have someone that coherently remembers every single detail of the, of these events. Which is like your best or your worst friend at yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> so. 
I um I it's a tiny little bag. Molly's like a crystal form, whatever. Uh, I just lick my finger and I just dunk it in the bag. And Marissa, what did you say it looked like? Um, it like looked like a baggie full of biotin. <laughs> just like a hair. That hair be growing after this. You took so many doses that hair be a foot uh, long. So much. well, and here's the thing: like I just if if you're gonna do Molly, which again, this is this podcast is not in any way, shape, or form suggesting or uh, promoting drug use at all. But this is just this is my story, my truth. Just uh, don't just wait. Just like you know, like do a little, and then I would just say, just wait. Just give it a solid wait okay because i was like doo, 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 doo. i was like aren't people rolling their balls off by now shouldn't these lights look different shouldn't this music sound cooler <sighs> i think i'm gonna do another dip and marissa was like are you sure and i was like yeah and i will say everyone that was around us at this club there's tons of people at this club it's not even just like our group anymore there's just like a shit ton of people everyone's being very like um confident in the in me taking more and mind they you were doing more. we felt so awkward so we were like oh, yeah. we've got to turn it up like, i was the, i've got to get drunk you've got to get something it put else us in a bad like, the, the heels and dress put us in a bad mood everyone looked yeah. so cool and we looked like losers and so i was mm -hmm. like let's eat yeah let's turn it up exactly we needed to like do something for our mood and i was watching and i know i shouldn't compare my drug intake to grown men but i was watching them do more so i was like i can do more me like not mm -hmm. a grown man or a grown man's size so mm -hmm. i was like i don't know why but anyways and here is the craziest thing about my brain it's fucking stupid because i've never done molly before like why would i think like i should do more <sighs> so i do more all right i am so excited obviously you guys know that i bought a house a year ago we are loving it we're happy we're thrilled to be here we finally feel like we're out of the woods with furnishing it and i used article oh, i'm obsessed with article we use it for a couple of the guest rooms but something that i just ordered from article the outdoor area of our home we really we really like let that one get away from us and then i was like wait i want to have fun parties out here so i just recently i'll tell you what i ordered i ordered the attica dining table for 10 it's like the most gorgeous like wood looking like just gorgeous gorgeousness and then i got a couple of the outdoor seating sections as well so we got it's like a chase lounge um um, the one that we specifically got was the Galpin 65 inch lounger. I just think those are just fun. I am ecstatic to get them in the mail because here's the thing about Article. Article and their ordering process is just iconic. So Article believes in a delightful design for every home. And thanks to their online only model, they have some really delightful prices too, let me tell you. So they have anything you want, okay? They have a curated assortment of mid-century modern, coastal, industrial, Scandi, and boho designs. So it makes furniture shopping simple because you can just like navigate the website like that. I love their website. They also have an option on their website that's like in stock or out stock. So like you can really just like search for stuff. If you're on a crunch, like that's definitely in stock. You can get it right now. Or if you were like me and you had a while before your house was being built, you can navigate some other options that maybe aren't in stock right now because you have some time, okay? It's just amazing. And Article's team of designers are all about finding the perfect balance between style, quality, and price. And that's a big one for me because you either get a crapshoot of like really crummy items, but the price is there or something that's so overpriced and you're like, but the quality is not even that much better. So Article really does a beautiful, beautiful balance between all of that. And they are dedicated to thoughtful craftsmanship, which is great. That stands the test of time and looks good doing it. And I can attest to that because the things that we have, we have some bedside tables, we have a um, headboard and a whole like bed from Article. They have completely and totally stood the test of time and we love them. We will use them for our moves to come in our other houses that we hopefully will have one day. I would love to have more multiple houses. Okay. Um, I'm manifesting that. But Article offers fast, affordable shipping. This is a big part, okay? They offer affordable shipping across the U.S. and Canada, and they will not leave you waiting around. With Article, you pick the delivery time, and they'll send you updates every step of the way. They really do. They keep you in the loop the entire time. It's on your terms. I just love that. And Article's knowledgeable customer care team is there when you need them to make sure that your experience is smooth and stress-free. We already have so many other stressors when you're moving into a new house. Like, getting furniture delivered should be the last of it. So, Article is offering my listeners $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. To claim, visit article.com slash probably, and the discount will be automatically applied at checkout. That is article.com slash probably for $50 off your first purchase of $100 or more. I do another little dunk it in there. It, it, I can't explain to you how bad this shit fucking tastes. <laughs> This shit tastes so bad. It is like you g scraped battery acid off of a car, you dunked it in vinegar, let it solidify, then let it dry in the sun, scraped it off again, and then drizzled fucking uh, like the extract of bitter 
onto it and then you put it in your mouth like and everyone's just like acting like it's not they're like mm, that tastes bad i'm literally like oh, oh my oh my god 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 how are y'all doing this and then i'm also like are people watching us do drugs at this table nobody gives a fuck uh-uh. in ibiza let me tell you everyone about- in ibiza is doing it you and, have to to be around the music and to be around uh, you just have yeah, to. yeah so i was like okay everyone really doesn't give a fuck so anyways i'm just like making faces and everyone's like relax so fast forward i'm just like any day now i'd love to start rolling however the kids say it i'd love to start that journey and then um everyone the music starts picking up everyone's having fun everyone's laughing and mingling at this point and it is truly it is like I understand how people are able to direct and like uh, facilitate movies because what I've seen in movies about like someone doing too much Molly or like a funny story about Molly, the music, like everything went shoom. And like, (laughs) it was like the music totally changed. It was like, it was like, and I was like, oh my God. But immediately, immediately. And then the lights were like, they were flashing really bright and really fast. And they were like, flash flash and i was like what and immediately i know okay it hit it hit and so i start freaking out but i'm also smart and know why would you freak yourself out if you took the drug you want to feel this way but then there was this tiny part of me that's like did you take too much though did you take too much and then i was like shannon I'm, not, I'm saying this in my head. I'm like, shit. I actually, my heart is beating so fast retelling the story. I am so, I am so right back to this moment. And it's, oh no. I, it's like giving me anxiety. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Okay. So fuck. Okay. So I'm like, you took the drug. You want to do the drug. This is literally the same story I'm telling about Coachella, but the Coachella ended wonderfully. Cause I was just like, yeah, you did. It's fine. You were back around your friends. You listened to music. It was great. I probably took a preferred dosage of ecstasy at, at Coachella. So, um, I start telling myself that same thing. You did the drug. You want to do the drug. You wanted to feel this way. This is part of it. Enjoy it. I I mean, there was absolutely nothing. The Pope himself could have like spritzed godly water on me. Holy water. Jesus is not. I mean, clearly I'm (laughs) not well versed in the topic. He could have spritzed me and held my hands and said a prayer over me with rosary beads. And I literally would have been like, nope, 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 nope. Still stressed out. Still stressed out. Not safe, not safe. And so there was nothing I could do. I don't know at this point if anyone is watching me freak out or if this is just like an internal battle but i just remember looking around and like everyone was la like everyone's like <laughs> and i was like oh no and then i was like watching conversations happening and then the music was still like and i was like oh it's all so different and it all changed and i don't like it right about that time one of the girls in the group was so nice she comes over with ice cubes i think i actually watched her do it to other people so she might have just been making the ice cube rounds and she was she put it on my wrist and she started rolling it on my wrist and then she started putting it on my neck and she's like how you feeling and i was like um i think right now like literally right now i'm having a panic attack and she was like oh let me just preface this girl we're not gonna use any names but like this girl was a literal savior in my life she was like oh okay well let's go figure it out she wasn't like what do you mean you're having a panic attack how much did you take why do you think you're having a panic attack what do you feel like what's going on in your brain right now i was like i'm having a panic attack she's like you think you're having a panic attack and i was like oh i'm actually currently right now in this exact moment i'm i'm actually having a panic attack and she was like all right cool let's you want to go to the bathroom and i was like i don't know where the bathroom's at and she was like We can walk you to the bathroom. And here's what I will say. This is, and Marissa's like in a conversation laughing, having fun. I did not want her to know I felt this way. I was embarrassed. Um, Here is the scary part. And I think this is an, an important part to discuss, not just like funny stuff about drugs. I'm walking to the bathroom with her. I'm holding her. I have, yes, I have my Bottega heels in my hand at this point. Mm -hmm. Who could be sure how high my dress is riding up as I'm walking? everything's dark the lights are crazy we are walking through kind of a bit of a maze in the club to get to where the bathrooms are at. she doesn't know where they're at either she did look at me at one point and she was like hey 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 make sure you hold my arm though because you are at this moment you're exactly what bad people are looking for and think about mm. it like that is scary and you should be very mindful if you're going to put yourself in a position like this i personally would only do a drug if i was surrounded by a group of people that i felt really safe around which thankfully was this group even in the most <laughs> tragic of moments of my drug experience like they did 
keep me safe, Mm -hmm. especially this girl. And I thought about it later on and I'm like, that is so fucked up. Like this is true. Like people that are have very, very horrible intentions for other girls, like are looking for the girl that's rolling balls about to throw up and can't like find her way to the bathroom with her heels in her hands and a short dress that's riding up. Like, yeah, that's scary. So fucking don't do drugs unless you're in a very safe place with people that can take care of you. And also just don't ever do as much Molly as I did. But um, (laughs) we go to the bathroom. I'm thinking I'm just going to cool down. I'm just going to cool down. I'm probably five steps away from the bathroom. And I'm like, I'm going to throw up. And she was like, that's okay. You're good. Throw up. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm going to. And I like throw up a little bit in my hands, like a little bit. And then I like make it to the toilet. She still is so like, just chill. She's like, you're good, dude. Just get it out. You're good. And I'm like, okay, thank God. My hair was in like a very tight bun on top of my head. So I'm like, I throw up. I'm like, I'm shaking. Right. I actually am like, I can really do feel like I'm back there in the situation. I hate Molly so much. <laughs> um, so she's so wonderful. She like grows my back. She's like, you're good. She's like, listen, this sometimes happens. She's like, you probably just did a little bit too much, but it's okay. Because now that you threw up, she was like, I know a lot of people that do this. She's like, now you're going to have your come up. And I was like, what's that? She's like, you're going to feel really lovey dovey. Everyone had told me like, Molly makes you feel so lovey. You just want to like hug everyone tell everyone you love them, whatever. And I was like, okay. Okay, this is an absolute, uh, this is a dedication of my love. I'm going to put it on record here as if I don't often enough, but I just love bread, okay? Bread will always be a part of my life. I'm obsessed with bread. I'll never stop eating it. Like, I would just literally die if I was gluten-free, okay? I'm, I'm just so happy that I can eat so much bread. But I try to get good for you bread, okay? I'm not quite yet at the point in my life where I make my own sourdough, so I just want to make sure that the bread that I'm consuming is good. And especially during the summer, we're doing a lot of grilling, a lot of outdoor entertaining, and... Let me tell you what's essential to us. That That's going to be some buns, some buns. We got burgers. We got hot dogs. We have sandwiches. I'm a huge sandwich girly. When we go on the lake, like you better believe I'm making a sandwich and they're going to be phenomenal. So just because it is summer does not mean that you have to cut out all of your carb heavy foods you love. Honestly, whenever, whatever time of year it is, you don't have to cut out carb heavy foods. Now I also, I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. I also want to monitor the amount of carbs I'm having. Okay. But hero bread, hero bread is literally my hero because they reinvented the bread and buns that make summer great, that make every season great because they're fluffy, delicious. They have this flavor. They have texture. A lot of times when you hear of like a company taking some carbs away and adding in protein or something like hero bread is done, you're like, okay, yeah, but what does it taste like? And what's the texture. But here's the thing. It's just as fluffy and delicious as regular bread with no net carbs, zero grams of sugar and fewer calories. Plus here's the important part, protein and fiber. I have the hardest time getting protein in. Like James can just eat like a 27 ounce steak and I'm just like, not that girl. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to get protein in wherever I can get in and fiber, obviously very important as well. So They also have, this is my favorite part. Okay, so I always loved their, they have like brioche. They have all of these amazing buns for burgers, hamburgers, sliced bread. They've got these like tortilla wraps, but this new thing came out and I am, I am their biggest fan. They have Hawaiian rolls. Hero Bread makes Hawaiian rolls now. I'm obsessed with making those like Hawaiian um, roll, like summer sliders, but these are a bit more guilt-free. You know what I mean? You feel better about it. I put my ham, I put my poppy seed little mixture with the butter and the and the mustard. I'm just obsessed. Like I am obsessed. It's so good. And I feel good whenever I have it, okay? So Hawaiian roll is definitely my favorite. The burgers and their brioche buns, amazing. We love to make breakfast tacos with the tortillas. We just like the options are endless, okay? And with their sliced breads, I do like a French toast. Obviously sandwiches, obviously, obviously, obviously. But it's just amazing. And it's, it's compared to others, less healthy bread products. This really is so yummy. And like I said, the texture you're still amazing. It's really nice that I know I'm getting enough fiber. I'm cutting down on sugar. And like I said, I'm adding more protein. I just love that. Um, it's all your favorites, no consequences, no compromise. And like I said, zero to one grams of net carbs, zero grams of sugar, and it's really high in fiber. So the soft, fluffy experience that you will love while you're having a juicy hot dog on a summer day or a refreshing BLT. Now me personally, I'm a Southern girly. So like I love a tomato sandwich, which is just like their sliced bread, tomatoes, mayonnaise, and salt and pepper. <laughs> it's so good. But obviously we use their buns for cheeseburgers which are amazing. Their sliced bread loaves, their buns or tortillas, the options are endless, okay? And they also have these popular two gram net carb hero croissants. I love a croissant. I love a croissant that I can feel better about having. So if you want to keep the carbs out of summer without compromising on your flavor with Hero Bread, then you can get 10% off your order at hero.co and use code probably at checkout. That's code probably at H-E-R-O dot C-O. Hero.co, code probably. So it was crazy. As soon as I did throw up, as soon as I threw up, I was like, wait, everything's 
beautiful and everything's kind of fun and I like I'm so thankful for this girl I'm so thankful for her I'm so thankful for her and then I was like my consciousness came back in and I was like oh you're in your lovey-dovey stage like I felt it I knew yeah. what was happening so then I go back to Marissa okay so mind you like I have no <laughs> idea any of this is going on None like we are at the club we're partying I know that she's done the molly and we're just the molly the molly the molly the, is that we, like the she's Instagram? done the mollies <laughs> she had the mollies i don't know i don't know so she's done molly at this point and i'm sitting there and like waiting on the high to hit because everyone is talking about their high hitting and <sighs> she goes to the bathroom i think the girl comes back she kind of like checks on me like how you doing i'm like how shannon she's like she's fine she went to the bathroom like she'll come back and talk to you she comes over and i mean me i come over y- you were a tiny bit maniacal like <laughs> her eyes were huge she was positive and happy and so fast talking and energetic and like she was like um I'm I'm just like loving everyone and I'm just like having the best time I did think that I was just gonna die but I'm not gonna tell you about it because like I don't want to freak you out but I did think that I was just about to die um but I think I'll tell you about it in the morning because like I just puked and I thought that I was gonna die and I was like so was that just what happened <laughs> did you just puke and you were like yes but I won't talk about it anymore because I don't want to freak you out because like I think I'm on the come up and I was like what the fuck is a come up <laughs> And she was like, I just literally love everyone. I'm having the best time and I'm on a come up and I'm having a great time. And I'm sitting there like, you are having the most positive panic attack I've ever seen. Marissa, Marissa <laughs> looked at me because I did say, I go, I felt like for sure like I was going to have a panic attack. And here's the thing too. Mm-hmm. Let's not forget about drugs. You can literally overdose on drugs. Mm-hmm. So there was a moment where I was like, did I take so much that I need to now call someone and say, I have to be this dumb bitch, but I've got to go to the hospital. I took too much Molly. Does Mm -hmm. anyone have an EpiPen? Like, I didn't know. So anyways, I tell them, I'm like, I thought I was having a panic attack. And Marissa just grabs my (laughs) shoulder. She goes, I still think you're having like the most positive panic attack I've ever seen anyone have in my life. (laughs) It was the most wild thing to watch. So then she sees, she tells me, which this is where, this is where, this might've been what threw me back into the second pukey moment she was like do you have you looked at your eyes and mm-hmm. I was like no huh why and she was like your pupils are like I'm not gonna lie to you pretty scary right now and a guy sitting beside her goes oh she's got party pupils and I was like okay I don't like that what, what do you mean so I go because obviously I wasn't consciously aware enough to know that I was being a fucking like crazy person with my speech and my mannerisms and everything else like I was like my eyeballs so I I like take my phone out and open my camera and look at my pupils you guys I literally it it freaked me out it grossed me out it scared me it Mm -hmm. sent me right back into another spiral where I was like wait my eyes shouldn't look like that like why do I have like why I, I, I don't understand and she's like I mean are everyone's that big and I was like I don't think there's are why are mine so big she's like I think you did too much and I was like I think I'm gonna be sick well, go in like, the bathroom again we're like standing there dancing and you did sort of sneak away again which I didn't know like I knew that you ran back to the bathroom yeah I think I can't remember if I remembered or not but I just remember after you came back the second time well I go you were like I puked again I was like oh shit yeah I go to the bathroom again I puke. This is also like a random fact. I was like, where's all this corn coming from? She kept talking about it that night. We (laughs) talked about it the next morning. I was like, Marissa, the craziest thing is I threw up all this corn. She was talking about it with the girl in the bathroom who was like helping her while she puked. Yeah, she was like, it takes a long time to digest corn, I guess. And I was like, I just don't even know where all this corn came from. I was like, bitch, do you not remember? We sat at Nobu and you had three servings of baby corn. (laughs) Literally that afternoon. (laughs) She was like, oh, Um, so all of that just came back I don't know. Yeah, that was a random thought, but it made me laugh. It, It helped me uh, the next day whenever I was soulless um but yeah so I threw up again and then I was kind of just not buying the whole like it's okay girl it's just a come up I was like mm-hmm. ah, I think I might have just taken too much molly <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I'm not sure there's ever an up here um so then I was just cracked out on molly and basically like was doing this like almost like felt like um I guess I've had a lot of work done to my teeth, but like, have you ever had Novocaine um, Mm -mm. and shook a little bit? Mm -mm. When Taylor, my best friend, had her epidural, it's like such a agent inside of you. Sometimes it can make you like shake like that. And I feel like I was literally like, if you looked at me, you would have been like, are you cold? Even though I was like sweating my balls off. I was like, just like constantly like in this state of like, twitchy i took a picture of you i'll let it i'll let you decide whether you oh want to share it or not because oh you might God. not want to share it but i was like i have to remember this moment she is smiling I, 
producer I, Courtney, you have to look at this. We're at the table. And I like put her into the background with like the DJ and I'm like, smile. Her <laughs> smile was horizontal. Like her because eyes were huge, but her smile was horizontal. I mean, you looked. I never want to look at this photo again in my uh -oh. life. I'm going to look at it one more time. I truly. Did I send it to you? I have it. I have it. Okay. I truly to my core, like I never want to see myself <laughs> look uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll put it I'm up. I'll, it I'll flash it up for you guys. I, I mean, you guys, I couldn't fix my face. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, like I was like, she's like, smile. And I was like, okay. And she was, was like, she was I, like, just we, like regular. And I was like, I am smiling like regular. Like the picture got taken and I looked at you and I was like, would you like to go? <laughs> I think this is you a good guys, time to she go. She literally looked at this photo <laughs> and said, you want to go and I go oh I am so ready to go and I, um we sat there and we're like because she was you were trying to be the like good wingman friend whatever being like we don't have to go if you don't want to and I I'm didn't like, want we to be can. a reason and you're like, we could and I we remember left a visa club like I felt bad like immediately I'm like we're in Barcelona I spent all this time with Barcelona boy and you were such a cool person such a wing woman I go to visa like you even said you're like I did feel like I lost a little bit of my single friend going into visa which I was like nah I'm still here to party but really I was like ew every man I see is hideous <laughs> like <laughs> yuck um like I was definitely like more focused on like him right yeah so I thought to myself now you're the bitch that took too much molly and your friend has to leave the club because she's like one I don't want to be associated with you too you're in acrylic heels and probably wanted to leave anyways <laughs> three that was actually the main reason I, I just looked like scary like I just yeah no well and like we're sitting there dancing and I'm looking at you and I'm like you are never taking this again oh I was like I am Never. And she was like, I know. And I was like, no, never again. <laughs> no, I was never like, taking it no, again. No, I know. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm not doing a lot of cooking right now because I am on my honeymoon. That's right. I am currently on a very rocky ship. James is laughing at me, but listen, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I wanna tell you guys a little bit about caraway pans because when we are home and when we are cooking as newlyweds, that's right, because we just got married, we use caraway pans. We love that caraway is clean, non toxic. Um, honestly, James does a lot of the cooking in the morning, so he's obsessed with their slide off the pan eggs. That's what happens because they have such a naturally slick surface because of the ceramic. And you don't have to use much oil, which is fantastic because I feel like I was always just adding more butter, more oil, more butter, more oil and then really the issue is the pan but in our household we really like to keep it clean we like to keep it as clean as we can um, and so caraway is fantastic for that I also love the colors we have a green color I don't know if you guys have seen our kitchen on my Instagram but it's like all green and so it's very aesthetic very pretty but mostly caraway just brings me peace of mind because they have non-toxic cookware that's free of dangerous chemicals they are free of stuff like PFAs PTFEs PFOA like it's all the dangerous hard to pronounce chemicals okay so we love that because it gives us a peace of mind this is what always happens with caraway pans. Someone buys one pan to try it out and then they end up getting obsessed with this or they buy another and then they're like, why don't I just buy the whole set? Like, don't have buyers from worse, okay? Just invest in the full set in the first place because caraway's internet famous cookware set, this is what we got. It comes with the saute pan, the fry pan, the Dutch oven, the saucepan, and lids for all of them, all right? Plus, it's got this really cool canvas lid holder, magnetic pan rack for storage. It's just the ultimate kitchen setup. It's gonna save you $150 versus buying the items individually, okay? So ditch your chemicals with caraway, Caraway's home non-toxic kitchenware features a chemical-free ceramic coating. So food's going to be prepared with peace of mind. Like I said, hard to pronounce chemicals are not going to be in your healthy ingredients because when you're spending all this money just buying organic food and produce, you don't want to make it all toxic with your pans, okay? So carawayhome.com slash probably 10 is going to get you to see all of their favorite products. The cookware that I use to make cooking easy for even the most amateur home chefs but honestly it, this is for any chef okay plus take an additional 10 percent off your next purchase this deal is exclusive for my listeners so visit caraway.com slash probably 10 or use probably 10 at checkout caraway non-toxic cookware made modern and guys i'm literally in the hull of a ship just recording this ad for you guys so that's how much i love caraway okay sorry for the background noise love you guys bye i'm on my honeymoon and then it's funny because we get back to the hotel and here's the thing you said this and i appreciate you saying this she's like at least you like 
walked in with your heels like to the hotel like you weren't like you didn't have to be drugged into the hotel you didn't have to be drugged out of the club like we found a cab like when we were walking to the cab we passed several several girls who were like passed out with their friends against a fence puking like, into the on the grass. sidewalk with a group around them like fanning them and yeah. I'm like that there was a very like Fine sobering line. moment that was like okay that like one more dose of it or one more whatever one more lick and I would have been on the streets okay yeah. so I was just like yeah I was able to walk out of the club and then walk into the hotel and nobody like our very fancy nice hotel and nobody was like that bitch is strung out but if you would have talked to me you would have been like that bitch is strung out mm -hmm. so we go back I'm obviously not gonna sleep for literally the rest of my life because I've just done so much Molly and um and we were only at the club after I was on it for like an hour so like yeah I'm still rolling right and I'm talking to Marissa and I'm like Marissa I don't even feel bad right now like I don't feel sick I don't feel nauseous I don't feel any type of way nothing's like triggering me in a negative way but if there was a button to turn this the fuck off right now I would press it like mm -hmm. if there was a button to turn the drug off at the highest high at the lowest low I would have always turned the drug off so that to me says in my trial period of trying this drug and I don't think anyone could convince me like there's been people that are like oh you just did too much like you could just do a little bit and you'd love it I'm like I just am pretty positive I tried this one out it's like uh Anna Grace with the mushroom story she's like I will never in my life ever you could never convince me to do mushrooms again yeah it's like getting food poisoning from something and you're like I can't eat that anymore well like, and I think I it's so weird about Ibiza's I've always wanted to go and in my head, I knew it was yachts and clubs and beach parties, but I'm not a house music person. I'm not a festival Me person. Me either, yeah. And I think I kind of knew it was DJ, but I just didn't know it was to that extent. Like, right. these are not Calvin Harris. I no. mean, maybe he goes there. I don't know, but he's got words to his music. <sighs> no this lyrics. This is no words. You guys, this is literally just unts, 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 Everywhere. Unts. Unless you're on Molly, then it's unts, unts, Yeah. Unts. So it's almost like you... You, I felt like you had to do something to enjoy that because that was, I love rap music, Thank hip hop, Thank you for making an excuse for me doing way too much drugs. <laughs> right? But like that drug, that drug, that club would have been hard to tolerate. We probably would have ended up leaving anyways, maybe. We would have just been yeah. like, this isn't our music. So also like disclaimer for anyone wanting to go to Ibiza, like. It's not uh, like Miami. Yeah, not, yeah. I think there was probably a different way we could have done it too. Like day two we hung by the pool all day you know you oh, like not well you you dabble in like a fun beach club but not like uns uns yeah and then that night we had one of the best meals of our whole life oh, gosh it was so good we went to this place it was called Casa Maca. it was quite literally if you go to a mm -hmm. visa and don't go to this dinner you fucked up like yeah. you fucked up if you go Absolutely. to a visa we almost didn't go because our our dinner reservation was maybe the latest one they would take it was like 10 30 but we obviously now we know a visa we were like hey, yeah that's fine yeah and so we went at 10 30 and we stayed there till 1 30 and it was mm -hmm. still packed when we left packed. like packed and like that i felt like we kind of had a redemption night so back to the outfits my tip for anyone and so i true. do this in miami i do this if I, I did it before Barcelona, like if you find places that you want to go, click on their tagged photos or like the place photos. Yeah. I try to look and see what everyone's wearing, which is where that first club, we were like, there is no way people are actually showing up in short tight dresses and, and sneakers. Shoes. I'm not kidding. They did. So like night two, we looked at Casamaca and we went to we Leo's and Pacha and I looked at all their photos and everyone was in short tight dresses or like body con whatever and everyone had on heels yeah. at the restaurant and at the club yeah. and so i was like we are gonna fit in perfectly and we did and we, we did had we such a redemption it. night we crushed it we um, had a great time we tried out probably every club we went to pacha we went to leo's like she said we yeah we highly recommend all of them it was fun um we didn't have like tables or anything so we were definitely just kind of like dancing on our own which marissa and i were like vibing with that um then earlier in that day to backtrack just a little bit so to go back a tiny bit to to barcelona guy so i had been continuously texting him continuously like facetiming him here and there but also trying not to be like clingy like he had gone to ibiza a ton so i said something like oh if it's okay i'll text you like while i'm in ibiza if we have any like questions or suggestions and he was like you can literally text me whatever you want. It doesn't have to just be for a suggestion. That bitch was going to be texting and, him. And Let's be like, honest. I was like, really? Let's be honest. Really? You don't mind? He's like, no, that's so cute. You don't have to say that. I was like, okay. And so anyways, we get to a visa. He's telling us like, he told us go Cosmaco, do whatever. But at some point, and I don't know if it was my horrible Molly trip. <laughs> I don't know if it was the horrendous like standby flight situation we had. Like that was so awful on vooling air. Like that was just really mm -hmm. terrible. 
So keep in mind, our plan has always been to our plan without a plan because we didn't book the flight show. We hadn't booked anything. We had just said after Ibiza, we will take a flight from Ibiza to Sevilla, Sevilla, however you say it, and spend a few days there. And then we'll go back to Barcelona on the very last day and fly back home. So Marissa looked at me at one point, literally can't even believe she said this. She was like, hey, she was like, even if I go on to Sevilla like I'd planned, you should go back to Barcelona to see Barcelona. And I was like, immediately I was like, oh, really? And then I was like, no, I can't do that. Like, I couldn't do that. You know, I'm not leaving you alone. Also, great A friend that you even entertained it. Some people, maybe even myself, would have left the other person's <laughs> ass so fast for the guy. No, I love you for that. I, no, I was just like, no, no. And you were like, Shannon, I was always going to go anyways, like it, by myself anyways. You hopped on this trip last minute. I had planned to go to Sevilla by myself. Like, dude, seriously, like go. And I was like, okay, perfect. And then I was like, wait he hasn't invited me back to this can just like show back up like <laughs> hey I'm back he'd be like what the fuck so anyways we just like kind of randomly talk about that well the day after like the very last night Marissa looked at me and she was like hey I am like stressed out about the flights I know you want to go back to Barcelona I personally loved Barcelona I feel like we didn't see enough do enough while we we're there together why don't we both just go back to Barcelona oh and here's the kicker there was a soccer game oh football game yeah football. and we both did I didn't know this Marissa is way more knowledgeable on the subject she was like Barcelona is like the world's favorite team like in the entire universe of like football aka soccer she was like they are like the world's favorite so she was like going to a game would be iconic and I not a big sporty hoops girl I was like that is so cool like I really did think I just kept telling Marissa I was like I'm so excited like this is sounds so cool to say we went to Barcelona and then we went to a Barcelona football game like mm -hmm. that's legit and she was like I know even when we ended up getting tickets fast forwarding like like everyone was like, how did you get tickets? Yes. How did you? And we were like, I don't we're know. like the bottom. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, she was like, let's go back to Barcelona. So I'm like, okay, perfect. This is way less creepy to text Barcelona. Now we're getting a little confusing because I keep saying Barcelona and we're, his pseudonym is Barcelona. But uh, I was like, this is way less creepy to text him and be like, I'm coming back to Barcelona if I'm with my friend. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, because we wanted to see a soccer game and la la la. Marissa, again, the goat. She's like, see if they want to come with us. I was like, no, no, you and I haven't got time to spend together. She's like, Shannon, the more the merrier. Like, see. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Guys, I am partnering with a really cool company and brand that's honestly been around forever because they are tried and true, and that is eHarmony. Now, they have a dating app now, okay? And they're going to help you find someone that you can be yourself with. Now, let's let's get down to, to the crux of it all because y'all know, if you listen to this podcast and you know me, I was going to ask, who's ever pretended to be into something that they're not actually into while dating someone? And you guys are like, you, Shannon, you've done that. And then one day you realize that's crazy. Like you don't need to pretend to be into something so you can connect with the other person. You just be yourself and then you'll find the right person that gets you, okay? And that's what eHarmony is all about. They want to find someone that gets you, okay? And I'm obviously married now and I did not use eHarmony to find my husband. But when I tell you the importance of being yourself around someone, it's just absolutely incomparable to being with anyone else. Like you just really do feel this sense of, belonging that you can't fake, you can't force. And it really only comes from being yourself. And I feel like when we start to date and like dating's not easy. So eHarmony makes that like really, really an easier feat in this day and age, especially with their app. Their app is amazing. So I've kind of turned all my friends onto it. Obviously I'm not an eHarmony myself, but I just think it's a really, really user-friendly app. And the reason you can kind of be yourself and show yourself more is because they have a way to really help you out with that. And that's their compatibility quiz. So that's going to help your personality come out in your profile, which makes all profiles in eHarmony way more interesting and fun to read. So if you guys want to give eHarmony a shot, I say get started with your compatibility quiz. Like I said, the app is easy to use. It's user-friendly. And you can find someone that you can genuinely be yourself with, okay? And I just feel like vice versa. Like when someone else is being themselves and it flows naturally and the other person isn't just picking up what you're putting down like they're genuinely just being themselves around you and that's the shtick they're just helping you find someone you can be yourself with that's what eHarmony is doing and that's what true connection and compatibility are all about being seen feeling heard understood and that is why more people are turning to eHarmony so get who gets you on eHarmony sign up today <laughs> so he texted me back he was so cute he texted back and was like Oh my gosh, I think I'm the happy. He's like, you're coming back. Like, I think I'm the happiest guy in Barcelona right now. And I was like, stop it, stop it. But then if later- If anyone is watching, even the way that you talk about him and you smile, I mean, it literally reaches your eyebrows. He's no. smiling. I'm back on Molly in the club. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, uh, it's funny, producer Courtney, when we finished part one was like, you literally are like glowing when you talk about him. Again, if all of this crashes and burns, like mm -hmm. I actually, I don't know how to explain to you guys that I just don't fucking care. Like to feel this like giddy and happy right now is- 
worth whatever the fuck else happens afterwards so mm-hmm. anyways it'll make good content either way so <laughs> either fucking way <laughs> do it for the podcast so um yeah so we go back and later on he had told me which i was like stop it that's so cute he was like uh my friend had looked at me uh it was like y'all's last night in Ibiza. you were flying to sevilla the next day and my friend looked at me and said you're gonna you're looking at flights to sevilla aren't you and i said is it that obvious and i was like you were gonna fly to sevilla he's like i don't know how i was gonna like say i was gonna be there but yeah i was gonna i had to go to see you and i was like that's so cute so cute so cute okay anyway so we go back to Barcelona. Mm-hmm. We go to the football game. It is really actually so fucking cool. We, we even, um, so you flew back from Ibiza to Barcelona, which by the way, the flight on Sunday leaving oh. Ibiza. <laughs> Street creatures. The airport. So the Ibiza oh. airport is everyone leaving Ibiza. I, <laughs> I was looking at my phone. I think I was doing some like Q&A on Instagram and I wasn't looking up and, and Marissa was just people watching the whole time. And she goes, look at that one. Oh, oh. Look at that one. The, I mean, girls still in their dresses. Dresses and stilettos walking to the airport. Oh, guys just with clothes hanging off of them, like dragging friends through. I mean, just. Street creatures dragging other street creatures. I never Mm -hmm. seen anything like it. I Mm -hmm. was like, I thought I was soulless after this. I was like, you guys are fucking scary. Because the clubs literally go until 6 a.m. So Mm -hmm. you know that people just had no sleep. And it was just like catching their flights. Yes. Yes. 100%. Mm -hmm. It was scary. Scary, scary place. But we. Someone even said, um, was it? maybe Barcelona, was saying that the flights leaving Ibiza are the most... Are the most missed flights... Yes, in the world. In the whole world. Entire planet. Yes, they have the most number of... Number one most missed flights, which I'm like, yep. checks the fuck out. Yeah. So, um, God, that's so, I'm so glad I did this terrible Molly trip the day before we left oh, instead of the day uh, after. I would have left you at Nobu. Oh, I would not have gone through the airport with you. <laughs> So anyways, I, um, we, we land in Barcelona airport. We go, we're like so excited that we actually go to this like very overpriced store and get Barcelona football, like mm-hmm. t-shirts and oh, we're, we're like, going in, we're like, go, if we're going, we're going yeah. baby. So we, uh, we cut them up and, or I cut mine up cause I'm a slut. And then, uh, we, <laughs> you know, I, I crop the top <laughs> and Marissa just like, you know, we're shirts like normal cause she's cute. And, um, we go to the game. It was so fun actually. So Barcelona and his friend came with us. It was just like a really fun time. We just have a blast and. And it was as cool as everyone said it was. Like the stadium, Camp New, New Camp, mm-hmm. you say, it was unreal. They actually, they lost, I think. But then we like. Last, last home game home game of the season so i yes. feel like everyone was really hyped there was like a big spirit there it, it was, was so cool and the stadium was massive huge like, football stadiums are huge this had i mean four tiers to it this it was, was way bigger than nfl stadiums here yeah. in the states like it and was the fact that it was sold huge, out sold on out. a 10 p.m on a sunday i mean that just goes iconic just, yeah iconic so we fast forward we go we we're just in barcelona for the next like what three days four days that was a Sunday and we left on Friday. Oh my God, five days. Okay, so yeah. so we go to that uh, football game. It's mm-hmm. iconic. And then we, I don't, we're, Barcelona boy is there. Barcelona man. He's a man, honestly. I've been talking to these boys and he's a man. Um, he's there for another two days before they go back. And I really don't have anything else to say other than like we just truly like connected even deeper, more like it was just like I I have really quite literally never experienced anything like it. And everyone that was around us was like, uh, wow, I've really never seen him like this. And then Mercer's is like, you look so different than I've seen you look before. And I'm like, interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah. But we're both trying to play it like kind of cool, but also not like our guards both they are definitely down. And then I was like, is this just some like random vacation? Like where, like I said, like, am I on the bachelor? Like, is this just like, is my brain so clouded? And then I was like, stop trying to figure it out. Just enjoy it. And then I guess the way it left off, because they were only there for two, two more days. We were there for five. The way it left off was just, he said, like, I really don't want this to just be a Barcelona fling. And I was like, me either. (laughs) He was like, okay, well, let's figure it out. And I was like, okay, day by day, we'll figure it out. So um, I don't know. That's, I'm just, we're just trucking along. I'll keep you guys very, very, very posted. Obviously, Um, Barcelona had little to no plans going into it and yeah I felt like that was one of the best things that could have happened is that it had no plans yeah it allowed there to be like room for so much fun and so much spontaneity and yeah. then like ended up with I know kind of a plan which is so we'll funny and so yeah where this goes for you we'll see I'm very goes. excited for you I am just irrevocably obsessed with him just mm-hmm. unconstitutionally obsessed with this man yeah, i just awesome. really am yeah he just does 
everything perfectly so far. Even the stuff that's like, I'm like, oh, I wouldn't have done that that way. I'm like, oh, but I see why he did it that way. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just, oh, wow. Okay. So anyways, we'll see. We shall see. Um, and then we spent, we went to, where did we stay the second time? We didn't stay at the Hotel Arts again. We stayed at, at the, the W. w. Uh, very big hotel, very pretty pool. Um, I don't know if I would recommend it. I didn't like love it. Did, I definitely liked Hotel Arts way better. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, lots of, we definitely stayed by the water every time because it was like beautiful and the pictures we were looking up, it was like beautiful, but like where the other guys stayed, for instance, that we were hanging out with, they were in more like city proper. Is that what you would call it? Like where the Soho house was. Right. Um, and I liked that area a lot. You could just walk it more. You'd had to take less taxis. It was just, um, yeah, I feel like unless you were planning on doing lots of pool, lots of beach days, probably stay in the city and then yeah. just like go down to the beach if you wanted to. Totally. Um, because like getting out, going to lunch, I feel like that's what we spent the next you know, handful of days doing. After I fucked my way through Hotels.com with Barcelona because we just were like, at his hotel, my hotel, then we would switch hotels. Then I went to Ibiza and came back and we were at a different hotel. I was like, five star reviews yeah. for, for all of them, really. Um, uh, five stars, five stars, five stars. Uh, but I, I, yeah, we, after that, her and I, Marissa and I just literally ate our way through Barcelona and I yeah. loved every fucking second of it. I mean, we just like shopped and then we would just like talk to bartenders and like try random like local liquors that were weird. Like it was just fun. Like we yeah. just, we just honestly felt like the first time we were just like relaxing and enjoying ourselves and vacationing. Um, I feel like making connections, which you made one, I'm, made some too so I felt yeah. like getting to like go back and hang out with people like that felt fulfilling versus yeah. just like knocking off more tours on the list so we just right. got to like vacation and enjoy and hang out with people and we may or may never not I may never see my people again you probably will playing the bachelorette know. party baby no I'm kidding um I uh I feel like when I, I like I said this at the very beginning of the other podcast I like fell in love with Barcelona, not, mm -hmm. okay, I fell in love with the city of Barcelona, okay, ooh, ooh, um, I fell in love there. with the pseudonyms are tricky, <laughs> I fell in love with the city of Barcelona, and I will, I like want to go back, like Absolutely. I just so really love it. One of my it. friends just booked, she's going in um, the fall, so ooh, I I'm love. gonna have to decide if I'm jumping back on that or not. I would, I, I have only great things to say about it. Um, that was our Spain trip, you guys, I will yeah. be back to Spain, Marissa's going back to Spain, you can come with us to Spain if you want, we could all just figure a group, we'll all just Zoom call it figure it out um <laughs> but i think that basically covered it all again sorry that i had to chop into two episodes but it was absolutely necessary mm -hmm. and um yeah we got we got love we got drugs we got everything covered so yeah. uh it won't be our last trip it won't be our last trip it will be my last molly trip <laughs> for the rest of my life period the end <laughs> um but yeah okay we love you guys bye